Welcome to the ePortfolio Update Edition. Uh, we are now in version 3 because version 1 was the one that was up on the website. I created version 2 and promptly broke it and then went, oh well, what the heck, it's version 3 now. So that's why we skipped the version number. Uh, it's because I broke the first one. So, quick updates, things you need to know. Uh, this video will be up through the usual channels. The supporting Word document has been significantly updated, so that's now in version 3.0. And this will be of interest to you because it contains new information for completing the assessment task effectively. It is also loaded up on the Wattle site under the assessments section, which has the very subtle arrows on the screen at the moment pointing out where you can find this. And if you can't find it, let me know. I will have probably posted a link to it in the forums and however I've communicated the existence of this video to you. Seriously, it's there on the site. Uh, I've loaded it already before I recorded this video. So this is dealing with the ePortfolio and the update patch. We now have a fixed due date for it and we have made a couple of uh, enhancements based on conversations I have had with students this semester and in the week uh, in week 10 there was a bit of feedback uh, from a number of student consultations and I took that on board and I made some changes. So due date 8th of November 10:30 a.m. I have been notified by the Research School of Management office that my entire wrap up, so we affectionately refer to it, the drop dead date of the, of the subject is a little over a week after this is due. So uh, I want to have everything done, dusted and wrapped up by the 15th for a everything submitted to the office on the 17th. So. I'm going to get these to come in at 10.30 on the 8th of November and I will be starting marking them at approximately 10.35 because these are 40% tasks. They are worth quite a number of minutes of my life to mark and there's 60 of them and I'm going to have some a bit of a challenge between me and the deadline to get it all marked and all done. Please be on time, and also for you, you don't want this thing to be kicking around uh, for an eternity. Now to recap two very important things about the ePortfolio. Number one, it is being hosted through the ePortfolio site on ANU. Two, you're going to submit it through Wattle. The portfolio itself can consist of text, image, video, quotes from forum posts, and you'll see there's a little export to ePortfolio button on most of your posts. Your contributions you've made to the Padlet, things you've said in classes, your self-evaluations, your own notes. We're going to talk through different bits and pieces, but basically it's pretty open slather. Be creative, be interesting, be yourself. Those are my my three guidelines are be yourself, be interesting, and be creative. And if you don't think you're interesting or creative, well, use Canva to be creative and don't tell me you're boring. Come on, just be yourself and let me be interested in that. I'm not going to recap the why, but the short version is this is the last task. This is the 40%. I had a choice. I could have made it an exam. But where's the fun in that? And also, exam totally doesn't fit the way we're running the subject these days. You have had opportunities to practice this, and as at week 10, when this is being recorded, you've still got two more, three padlets and two more weeks of classes to practice and train and rehearse and ask me questions about how do I use this technique or seek help or team up with each other to swap notes. You're still in the game, friends. You're still in the game. Now, the how of it. All right. We have the portfolio site. 
I'm not providing instructions on how to use the Mahara ePortfolio software because that is part of the assessment task. Learning how to use an unfamiliar technology, an unfamiliar website, and making it do what you want it to do is part of the work integrated learning, life integrated learning feature set of the ePortfolio. I'm going to give you guidance on a bunch of other things, but I am not giving you guidance on this because in the workplace, you will find yourself as an e-marketer in circumstances where the boss goes and says, all right, here's the keys to the website. Good luck. Uh, I want it done by Friday. They'll give you a bit of guidance and they'll say, oh, you're the e-marketing person. Just, you know, market me an E or something. Make it, make it happen. Anyway, got the next meeting to go to. Lovely to see you. Get on with it. Because that's how it works. And sometimes you get better advice, sometimes you get worse advice. But basically, the things that are important. The ePortfolio has a narrative. It is a curated collection of content. Uh, you have access to a range of self-evaluation tools, and those have been throughout the Wattle site. Throughout the f Each week, there has been the Padlet for the reflective exercises, and there's been a Word document that at the start of the semester was made available to you, which is helping you review yourself and your progress and what you're doing. And also a set of documents each week during the live learning events, we hand out a Word doc. So you've got all these notes, you've got all these elements, you've got all these component parts that you can use to go and write your curated narrative. So let's talk about a couple of the compulsory elements. First compulsory item on the menu, thing that is very important for you to have. The self-characterization sketch of who you were back at week one. I really hope you did it back at week one, but if you didn't, write it now. An optional element was to track how you're doing the midpoint in the semester as well, to say, well, this is how it's changed halfway through. And your next task is to do the end of semester, the week 12 self-characterization sketch. And the purpose of these sketches is that they're benchmarks. They are you describing yourself, who you were at the start, who you, maybe who you were in the middle and who you are now at the end. You are the central character of the narrative of your ePortfolio. So this is a chance for you to basically run the profile. Describe yourself yep, as a sympathetic friend would describe you, which also is a shorthand for saying, be nice about yourself. Start positive. Start, you know, this is who I am. This is what I've set out to achieve. On the week 12 recap, it's this is who I am. And this is what I achieved. So real, really looking for a bit of positive voice there. The second thing, We've got all these different contributing elements. I've touched on them briefly before. I'm going to remind you now. Week in, week out, you've had this chance to work with the content, to work with your project. 12 weeks worth of teaching and learning experiences, a two week semester break, an eight to 10 week long project, three other assessment tasks, and the portfolio. Bada boom, bada bing huge amount of content has been experienced, generated, created. Now, curate it. Give me the journey. Uh, there are multiple paths here. You can do this as the high point. You can do this as, well, there were four waypoints on the mission. There's when I started, there's when I did the ETA, there's when I did the EPR, and then there's when we wrapped up all the participation and engagement, and now, hey, here's the portfolio. So you can do it as major assessment tasks as your waypoint. You can do it each week, a weekly reflection of, well, that's, yeah, this is week one. This is ha what happened for me. What was good? What was the high point? What was the low point? That's how it worked. Or you can do it however you want. And what I want as the marker is for you to embrace this challenge and say, yeah, my story, my way. So thing is, documents we handed out, them were documents, they're the starting notes for the narrative. 
I don't want to see you just simply upload a dozen 24 Word documents and say, hey, done. I'm not going to find that to be a curated narrative. I'm going to find that to be a bunch of Word documents. So what I'm looking for is for you to go and express yourself, to tell the story of what happened on your journey in this subject. We have another element. This was referred to as the bullet point journal. It occurred to me that at no point this semester did I put in the content into the formal side. I didn't really talk about bullet point journals. I didn't really emphasize them that much. So I shifted the requirement insofar as it was a requirement. I shifted the expectation here to be more of a way in which you could appraise different parts of the course. Uh, so there are four prompt questions here uh, that you can use for appraising each week, or you can use to appraise the sections, or you can just throw in the trash and move on because it doesn't work for you. This is an optional element. This You might find this sort of question sparks some cues, thoughts that let you tell a story, let you tell your curated narrative. The fourth part. This one is compulsory. And this is ultimately the purpose of the e-portfolio is for you to be able to look back and go, so that's what that was about. It's a recap of the semester, but also it's a recap of the journey. It's where you've been through, what you've experienced, what you've done, how you have changed as a person. So we have three questions here, and it is okay to treat these questions as headers or sections or pages or hell ever you want to manage it. What was, the, what was the big lesson that you learned from the content? What was the, you know, you came to a subject, you came to a subject to learn stuff. What stands out as the, the content's major lesson? Then what was the lesson from the experience? You had 14 weeks worth of e-marketing experience, 15 maybe, if you count the exam break. What, what stood out? What's the bit where you look back and go, huh, yeah. Yeah, I, I want to tell that story. And the last question, and this is the, the big one, and as someone who's not much in the reflective and stuff like that, this is an important skill to have, and this is to be able to subjectively look back at the person who began this process way back, week zero, week one, and look at the person who you are now and say, well, what changed? What about me? From the experience of this subject and this semester, what changed? And it's okay if nothing did. It's equally okay if it was a you know, whole bunch of changes. Changes can be good, changes can be neutral, changes can be negative. It's about looking at that first character sketch and looking at that current character sketch and going, compare and contrast who I was to who I am. I'm asking this question, I have this question in here because this is the sort of thing you want to be thinking about when you come into the workforce and you're doing things like your performance reviews and you start thinking about, well, what is my goal for 2022? Who was I at the start of 2021? Who am I at the end of 2021? Who do I want to be at the end of 2022? How do I get there? How do I become that person? So that's what you're looking for there. Uh, so you're looking at three questions here that are all about the end game meta conclusion. It's the, con the narrative leads up to this and you conclude on these three questions. So I want to detail now into a couple of technical things. The portfolio is submitted through Wattle. There is on the screen in front of you, the point where you press the button that says add submission. Use that wattle submission and it will work for us and things will go well. And I won't spend most of that Monday going and sending people's portfolios back and saying, no, no, submit it through wattle. There is a button in the portfolio and it doesn't work properly. It will put your portfolio somewhere that I can't grade and I can't access through Wattle to give you a grade. So we really don't want that to happen. 
So please, when the when it's all done and dusted, it's like submitting any other assessment item. You come back to the waddle and you submit through the waddle. And yeah, I will absolutely be there to support you, help you, and get fix that up when it go if and when it goes wrong. All right, got you back on this. We'll work together to get through it. All right, the other thing, uh, big change log, big thing that changed between version one and version three. I realized on review and after a couple of conversations that I have inadvertently suggested that there were four sections inside the ePortfolio, but there's not. Um, instead of it being the evaluative criteria, the version one was not clear that that was a set of evaluative criteria that I was going to use so that when I was scoring your portfolio in criteria one, the, the presence of a curated narrative, you would go between fail, pass, credit, distinction, and then the high distinction categories. And that's what 40% of the 40% would be worth. So basically, I realized now that I've made that mistake and I'm correcting it. So the version three, what you're going to see is that there is a four criteria around which 20% is for the consistency of the story. Now that's what the consistency over semester means is you haven't gone and depending on which pathway and way you want to present it, there isn't a point where I go, yeah, you skip that. So say you decide to do the four main assessment tasks as your big um, high points and you give me this really in-depth analysis on the ETA and this massively in-depth analysis on participation and engagement, and you go, oh yeah, by the way, there was the EPR, you're gonna tank the consistency. Same way if you were to go, weeks one to three, they were awesome, weeks seven to 12, they were great. It's like, what happened to four to six? So that's what consistency over semester is about. Just basically you maintain your portfolio maintains its momentum. Creativity is nebulous, open-ended, and it's basically the points here are around self-expression. Uh, you've got access to Canva. Canva can be used in this process. You have been, everyone who's <coughs> who created and committed either a get hype or a subject logo, that's the sort of you already started doing artistic expression, artistic creativity. I like these portfolios to be a chance for you to really go, this is me. And there's 20% of present yourself. Same way, activity integration is about the way to which you draw on all the different things that have happened in the semester in a way that makes sense to your narrative. So overall, presence of a curated narrative, that this is a story with a start, a middle, and an end. And it tells the journey of a student who is profiled in that self-characterization sketch at the start. You tell this consistent, this story, which is consistently given its uh, creative and projective self, and you, uh, Bring together the different things that you've done in the semester. Because there's been three assessment tasks, maybe the power play, maybe the resubmission, maybe the, um, maybe you had two resubmissions and that's something you can reflect on in the, uh, the narrative. Maybe uh, you came back from the, resub the resubmission, gave you a chance to come back and then you got a title shot in the power play. Maybe you were just championship material from start to finish and the project itself was an absolute nightmare because it nothing worked the way you thought it would, but you still got points in the, this is the thing, this is your story. Tell me it, tell me about your journey in this semester. So story, integration of the component parts, express yourself and make certain it, make certain it's consistent across the no low points of performance in this so if you want to do well, you got to do well across the totality of your ePortfolio. 
Last thing to point out is that the marking criteria is available in the Word document, all the details in there. Functionally, a 40 from 40 is attainable, and many people did last year. And the reason it's attainable is I think you're capable of it. And I think that the portfolio is about you, your journey, and your reflection on that journey. And you got this. You got the you have the capacity to do this and put this into a way. There is no maximum number of high distinctions. There's no minimum number of their pass grades. I don't play to curves. I don't do that, my marking. My overall marking criteria, the 40 out of 40 is effectively going to still be a holistic document. Uh, I still want to reserve the right to go, that was awful, or that was awesome, or that could be amazing with a bit more, if you'd done a bit of this or done a bit of that. But at the end of the day, what I really want is I want the opportunity to be able to come back to my peers in the research school of management with a grin on my face to say, mates, you're not gonna believe what they did with the portfolios this year. Oh my God, they were phenomenal. So that's the challenge laid out for you. There's 60 of you. I would love to go and create an absolute nightmare for the grading committee because 60 people did awesome work. So I reckon it's in you. I reckon you got the capacity to do it and I reckon this squad is up for the challenge. So this is your intel. This is your update patch. Those are your criteria things. And narrative is key. Not just play back what happened, but interpret what happened, what you learnt from it, and how you do things differently as a result of what you've learnt. So, log yourself in, get your game underway, do it your way, find your own style, feel, be awesome, be epic, and be interesting, because you are fundamentally all those things. If you need me, light up the connections, book in the consultations, or send the emails, and... Uh, here we go, run home into the portfolios. I'm feeling confident and I think you should be feeling confident too.